418 and I'm back with another video two months later. <laughs> anyway, the last time I made a proper TGIF video was in October, if my notes are correct. I did make some goal videos in January, but other than that, I've kind of been MIA. And I apologize for that, but life happens, as I always say. Life seems to happen a lot more for me in the last few years, but that's okay. I'm not complaining. Well, some things I'm complaining about. Some things I would change. But um, I'm hoping to get back on a more regular recording schedule. But because I haven't recorded in so long, I have so much stuff to show you that I'm going to break it down into a few videos. I'm going to do a floss tube video. I'm going to do a quilting video. And I'm going to do some knitting crochet videos. Yeah. Um. Da -da -da, brain work. Um. First things first is I wanted to talk about some life stuff. Um. And then I'm going to show you what I've finished and then some like administrative stuff. So I mentioned in the goal video that Kristen and I are going to be moving. And I know a lot of you seemed uh, concerned about the move. This move is a move for good reason. We have decided to move into uh, my in-laws house because Kristen's dad is alone. And we live five minutes away, and we are there a lot. <laughs> so um, we have opted to move to the other house and to sell this one in the spring. So right now we are in the midst of uh, con Marieing our whole house, um, which has actually been relatively easy, and um, it's going fairly well, but there's a lot to do. Uh, are we stressed about it a little bit? Are we not stressed about it? Kind of not at the same time because we know where we're going to land. We know how it's going to work out and everything else. We have plans for the summer. Um, we, we, um, meaning the fa Kristen, her dad, and I uh, are planning on a big RV trip over the summer. We have a big, huge RV. So there's a lot of uh, road travel in our future so and we spend all our time I'm going on and on about nothing but it makes the most sense for us all to be together um, and we really enjoy each other's company and then it's one less worry for us because well Kristen's father is not old he's getting older he's and we don't want him to be alone um, and it's a grave concern down here um, down here we live a lower elevation that's why we call it down here um it's a grave concern when it snows and let me tell you in the last month and a half it has snowed a lot Kristen did the math and she has spent more time more overnights at her house at the other house than this house so anyway that's where we're moving it's not an entirely stressful situation it's all for good reason I feel good about the move am I gonna miss this house absolutely this is the house where Kristen and I started our life together and um, it's going to be hard to leave this is also the house that Kristen's mother grew up in um, but I think we're ready I'm, I'm we're we talked about this a lot before we um, discussed it with Tom which he I seem to be really excited about it so um, everybody everybody's on board everybody's happy about this move so that's the move. Not a bad thing. Not as stressful as it can be, but, you know, a change. Um, the other, th was two other things. I mentioned in the last video that I'm waiting for some test results. I haven't decided if I'm going to talk about that on video yet, um, because, uh, I don't know. I just don't know. It's really new and raw. I, I found out about it in September, and I had the test in December, and this is, I hate when people do this, when they talk about something but don't talk about it at the same time. So let me just say, I'm getting my test results on Tuesday. Kristen and I go to get the results. And um, I think at that point, I will probably decide what I'm going to do. If I'm negative, I probably will not sh share um, because it impacts more people than me, even if I am negative. And if I am positive, um, it will probably take me some time, but I probably will share. So, um, yeah, it's not, 
it's not a life or death thing, so don't worry about that. It's just a life, a life altering. It will change the trajectory of our lives. Okay, that sounds really catastrophic. <laughs> As time goes on, I'm sure I will share more with you, but at this point, until I have my results and until I know, um, I, I am not ready to share. And um, please know that I am in a good place regardless of what my test results are. Um, it's just we are still coming, you know, coming around to what this could be. Anyway, okay, so I just told you, I'm not going to tell you and then talked all about it. I apologize for that. Like I said, that's a huge pet peeve of mine, but... Some people have asked, I am okay, I will be okay, and that's all that matters. Um, lastly, if you follow me on social media, meaning Instagram, because my Facebook is private, um, you probably know that Maxwell ended up in the hospital. Um, three weeks ago, Max had a seizure, and he went into tachycardia. His heart rate was four times what it should be. We were transferred from our local hospital to Caves in Concord. He was there overnight. They could not get the tachycardia under control. He was then transferred to Tufts in Boston, not in Boston, in Massachusetts, um, right outside of Worcester, and he was there overnight. Um, they finally did get the tachycardia under control. He actually met with a neurologist, a cardiologist, and everything else, and um, ultimately we made the decision to put Maxwell on seizure medication because things are progressing, and once things start to progress, um, the only thing you can do is medicate to try and slow things down. But he's doing great. He's back to himself. It took a couple days, but um, we got a little vacation to Worcester, Massachusetts um, in a snowstorm. But everybody is doing so much better now. Um, it was an expensive trip, but uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. We do have pet insurance, which covered about 40% of the bills, so that's helpful. But um, they don't cover the rest of the bills. They don't cover hotels because Tufts is four hours from us. There's no way. Well, it was four hours from us because we were in a snowstorm. It's closer to two and a half without snow. Um, so we had no choice but to stay in a hotel. So he is doing well. He has adjusted to the medication fine. He's a little more uh, clumsy in the back legs, but that's to be expected with the medication. I think that's all the life stuff. Kristen took a quick trip to Florida with her father for four days to buy a scooter. That goes along with the RV and the traveling we'll be doing over the summer. So that was fun. I was up at the other house. Molly got to go with them. She got. She's getting very good at. The sun's going in. She's. She's getting very good at um, being a hotel dog. This could be a problem. Anyway, so let's get into why you came here. First, I should say. Not first, I should say. But next, I should say. Over in my Etsy shop, I decided just to have a coupon code for 25% off. So if you go over to the Etsy shop and you put in the code just because, all one word, you'll get 25% off in the shop. Um, I think the co coupon is good through tomorrow, but I'm going to probably extend it for the rest of the week. My, phone, my video is getting extremely grainy because the sun just went in, so I apologize for that. Um, so just because over in the Etsy shop, the Etsy shop hasn't had... Um, much going on in there because I haven't really had a lot of time. But, all right, now what have you really come for? To see what I've been knitting and crocheting. Um, I don't have everything. Some things have been gifted. Some things have been donated. So I'm going to show you what I still have, which is still a lot, what I still have here. So the first thing I finished, which I showed you before, and I've been wearing the heck out of this, is the Foxy Frolic sweater. I absolutely love it, and I love it so much that I knit a miniature version for Dewey with my standard Dewey sweater pattern. Um, this, all my patterns are linked in Ravelry, even if the pictures are not there yet. The pictures for this are. Um, this pattern is live, and it's awesome, and I highly suggest you go get it. It's just, it's a fun knit, and it's fun to wear. I've gotten more comments out wearing this sweater than any sweater I've knit before. So, Foxy Frolic. Um, and 
as I said, I knit one for Dewey too, but it's in the laundry. So we had a little photo shoot and I'll put a couple pictures here of him and I modeling our sweaters together. Uh, it was kind of fun, kind of funny. Um, over the fall. It was late fall. I don't know when it was. October? November? I don't know. So that's the first thing I finished. Well, I don't think this is actually in order. Finished a pair of socks, and I haven't knit a pair of socks since these. I have been, I don't know, sock hiatus, but I did, whoa, close up. I did cast on a pair last night. Um, this is Mustache Yarns uh, Perfect Sock Self Striping in the Sorting Hat colorway. And these are for me. And here they are. Um, I did so that to keep in the striping pattern, I did just use a black um, fingering weight yarn I had in my stash to do the heels. And now I can finally wear these. I think I finished these the day before Thanksgiving, and they've been sitting waiting to be shown. So, love them. I really love the mustache yarn. Yarn. It's beautiful to work with. Um, next, I watched a podcast. I haven't been watching much YouTube, but I watched a podcast over the fall, and I can't remember what fiber, fiber, fiber something. Anyway, I watched a video, these two guys, um, one knits and one quilts, and, um, the guy, I can't, why can't I think of what the name of it is? Anyway, he had knit this hat, the Jason's Cashmere hat. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, and I had the skein of Knit Picks Tweed, and I thought it was perfect, so I cast on the, this color is not coming out properly. That's more true to color, but it's a very, very teal color. Um, I love this hat. I wear it to death. Um, I like that it has the long brim because when it's cold, I can pull it down further. I'm not typically one for the folded brims, but this hat is getting a ton of wear with the weather we have been having. We didn't get the polar vortex that the Midwest got, but we have gotten wind chills down to negative 50. Um, so it's been cold. So Jason's cashmere hat. This is very beginner friendly, like first cabling project. This would be perfect. Um, next, uh, I am not going to even attempt to say the name of this sweater. It has not been released yet, but when we were in the test process, I did ask about sharing it and they said it was fine. Um, Beitling, um, B-E-I-T-I-L-Y-N-G. It is linked on my Ravelry, and once the pattern is live, it should automatically link itself. Um, this is a sweater. This is knit out of the yarn from the sheep farm down the road. And I do love it. Oh, see my tail? I haven't cut off my tails yet, because I just, it just, uh, after I blocked it, I just left it sitting there, but, because I knew I couldn't wear it. I wanted to show you guys, so there it is. It's awesome. It's super thick. Um, great for the weather up here, and I think it looks pretty nice on me. Um, I wasn't sure that my blues had enough contrast in the beginning, but seeing it all done, I really do love it. Another pattern I recommend, this and the fox are both knit from the top down, which is my favorite. Um, yeah, love it. Highly recommend. And like I said, this isn't released yet, but once it is, it will automatically link on my Ravelry. Another one that I finished, not a sweater, this is a shawl, is out of Miss Babs Tarte in the Shaken Not Stirred colorway, I believe. This was a gift from Dewey. Um, I just took this off the blocking wire, so I still have two threads hanging because I don't cut my threads till after I'm done blocking. But this is the Changing Staircases shawl. It's a pay for a pattern on Ravelry. And I love how it came out. I really, really, really do. However, oh, actually, I really like that. I am realizing I'm not much of a shawl person in terms of wearing them. So I probably won't be making too many shawls in the future. But never say never. I always change my mind. It's a great pattern, easy to pick up and put down, beginner friendly again, I think. Um, 
yeah, highly recommend. Highly recommend. There's that one. I love the colors. So hopefully I will wear it. I have a whole basket of shawls that I can't tell you the last time I wore a shawl. But that's okay. Um, I knit what makes me happy. It doesn't matter. Um, for instance, I love to knit baby things. I have no babies. I have no babies. But I have a drawer full of baby things. And then when it gets full, I bring them up to the hospital and donate them. So, um, next. This is the Fuzzy Sheep. This is from a book, but I can't remember which one. Um, I knit this, uh, not knit, I crocheted this out of some yarn. <laughs> um, I know the brown is I love this yarn. And the white is another one. Bernat, it's not Tizzy, because that's the one that I had trouble with. Is it Bernat Blanket? I don't think so. It is linked on my Ravelry. It's very extremely hard to knit with. I mean crochet with because you can't see the stitches. However, I love him. He's so cute. He's so cute and tall and yes. He's one I will be keeping because I am keeping all my sheep toys. All my sheep toys I am keeping. Easy pattern. Straightforward. Pretty quick. What is the name of that yarn? I don't know. Pipsqueak. That's what it is. Burnett Pipsqueak. There you go. So, there he is. And the name of the pattern is Fuzzy Sheep. And again, he is linked on my Ravelry page. Next, Kristen um, saw me knitting, crocheting that sheep and said, Oh, that would make a really good abominable snowman. A really good Yeti. So, of course, I had to um, do that. Because what Kristen wants, Kristen gets. As she should. So I knit her this little Yeti. This is a pay for pattern. It is knit flat in the pattern, but I knit it in the round because I hate seaming. And I think it came out pretty good. The face is in Tarja. And I couldn't be more happy with how this came out. Um, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. And she loves him. He actually has been sitting on the mantle. Soon he will be packed away to go to our new home. But he's really cute. Um, the pattern is actually for a Yeti and a Bigfoot. Uh, it's the same pattern, interchangeable. I love the feet that he has toes. Great pattern. Great, great pattern. Next from, let me find it, from this book that I got, not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before. I knit, but I didn't knit, I crocheted the, um, the Dorset Sheep, and let me tell ya, I had to go out and buy more yarn for this, but it doesn't count because I really needed it to finish the project. It is a yarn, it, 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 it eats the yarn. Um, here he is. He is crocheted out of um, Woolies. Uh, I can't remember the colors, but he is linked on my Ravelry. And I ran out of this, and only one store carried it, Joanne. So I ran, and I just got what I needed to finish him, so I don't consider that stashing. I really don't. But I did use up more yarn, so... He's so cute. And this stitch takes forever. Forever. He is, his body I believe is two full skeins of woolies. And he's tiny, so. It's worth it though. He's adorable. See his little eyes. I don't think they put eyes on him in the, in the, um, pattern, but he has to see. He's so cute. I love him. Love him. I'll be keeping him too. Um, next I crocheted a blanket out of two skeins of Lion Brim Mandala in the gnome colorway, and this is Basking Butterflies Baby Blanket. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. <clears throat> Here it is. It's upside down. There we go. I did an extra repeat to make it more of a usable size. It was a fun, quick project, and 
two skeins I used. And then I just went around it. Yeah, I went around it with a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Can't remember what they called it in the pattern. <clears throat> but I love it. And this will go in the baby drawer for when we have a friend who has a baby or a grandbaby or we'll go to the hospital. <coughs> More likely the hospital. Um, next, I pulled out this skein of Burnett Baby Sport. I have a ton of this. It was in the color Popsicle Blue. And I asked on Instagram what I should crochet it with it, what kind of baby blanket, and someone, Sonia, recommended um, a sideways shell, so I did that, and then I edged it in just the Bernat Baby Sport in taupe, and I think it came out great. This reminds me of beach glass for some reason, probably because of that blue with the sand and light colors but I think it's really pretty and it's not so delicate that you a mother would worry about using it with their baby so this is gonna go in the baby drawer also um next I finished a sweater I have not woven in the ends or blocked this yet but this is the Ellison and I knit it out of knit picks wool of the Indies sport in Baltic Heather And this is for myself. Maybe I'll weave the ends in on this today. It's just a stockinette body with some textured sleeves. I love how it fits. I love the color. Um, really happy with it. I have to get it blocked so I can get some pictures for my Ravelry page. As you can see, I have all the strings hanging. <coughs> Relatively quick knit, easy knit. Highly recommend. Great beginner sweater, I would say. Um, yeah, the, the sleeves are a very simple, simple pattern and um, pop down in the round. Can't go wrong with that. And it's just, it, it's nice. I love it. Love it. And the last thing I finished is a sweater for Dewey. This is also out of Knit Picks Will of the Andes Sport and the Baltic Heather and then <clears throat> I think the other color is white and I used my regular dewy sweater pattern from the top down with afterthought, afterthought sleeves and I just used the chart from the Sunday Picnic Dog Sweater which is linked and here it is for Dewey. He looks awfully handsome in this all, however I have not allowed him to wear it because I wanted to show you guys. So how I knit it is from the neck down to the bottom. And I put in um, waist yarn for the sleeves, and then I pick up and knit the sleeves after. And this is just my own pattern that I have developed over years with Dewey. If I ever had another small dog, I would have to start all over again. <clears throat> because it won't fit anybody but Dewey. Because he has to have a really high belly band, because he pees on everything, <laughs> and I like it long in the back to go down his back some more because it's really cold here in Vermont. Whew. Okay, those are all my projects I have to show you. <coughs> the last thing I wanted to talk about with you was the uh, stuffy live sale. I am going to go ahead and do that. Um, Kristen and I have talked about it and we are going to do it on February 27th, which is a Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I figured 8 p.m. is a good time because um, people on the East Coast and the West Coast may be able to get to it. Um, I have about 20 stuffies that will be available and on Friday the 22nd I am going to put up a preview video so you can see if there's anything you would like. Um, the What you will need for the pre-sale is you will need a PayPal account. Um, and it's just going to be first come first serve. Um, it's not going to be like a bidding war. There's going to be a set price including shipping for each stuffy and the first person who claims it will have 24 hours to pay 
and otherwise it will move on to the next person and you will need to supply me with your email address for PayPal so I can invoice you and also your shipping address. Pretty easy. I'm hoping it'll go smoothly. Um, if it doesn't, I wouldn't do it again. Um, there's quite a few. There's, there's monsters, there's animals. I guess that's what stuffies entail, isn't it? So that'll be February 27th and the preview will be this Friday the 22nd. So that is all I have for you today. I hope you guys are doing really well. Things here, all things told, are going pretty smoothly. Um, so until next time, which will be tomorrow, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye-bye.